Welcome back everyone to another Kerbal Space Program video and today's Kerbal Space Program video is going to be something really exciting and that I've been looking forward to for a really long time. Uh, today I'm going to be recreating the Perseverance rover mission that was launched in July of 2020 and is now almost uh, on Mars or by the time you're watching this it might already be on Mars. Um, but yeah, I, it was really fun to build this mission and kind of be really creative in how I made the rover and uh, Ingenuity, which is the little helicopter for the rover and the sky crane and just all around. It was really interesting um, to make. It was a lot of hard work, I think, um, in total with designing the rover, flying the mission, you know, and redoing it in case anything went wrong. I think it was like a couple hours worth of work. So I really hope you do enjoy it. Um, but yeah, anyways, we can talk more about what's happening on screen. Right now, I'm constructing the Perseverance rover. I have that RTG to kind of simulate the uh, power generator that's going to be on the actual Perseverance rover. And then I was kind of used a mixture U to create the shape of Perseverance's head. It's more of a square shape uh, for the actual Perseverance, but I think that works out pretty well. Uh, now, underneath the belly of the rover, you can see I'm constructing uh, the Ingenuity helicopter which would be deployed so we can do some um, flights on Duna, or in real life it would be Mars. You can't really get that much flight time out of it, I'm, I think with one charge on the solar panel or and the batteries you can probably get around 45 seconds, maybe a minute of flight time. Um, and that's just because, you know, we're, we ha also have a reaction wheel in there that you might, you might notice I placed that in. Everything kind of had to be clipped into each other like that to be able to be fit underneath the rover. Uh, I could have put it on top, but I think it was worth it to fit everything underneath, um, you know, because it's more accurate to the actual mission. Uh, now what I'm doing is, uh, you probably saw that I put those rover wheels on servos, and that's so that we can have them kind of folded away, um, almost like how the actual Perseverance rover will have them. It's not um, exactly how it will be, but it's still kind of a folding sequence which I thought was um, it, I thought it was worth it to put it in there, but anyway, that's the rover and the helicopter done. So now I'm going to start construction on the sky crane. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I think it looks pretty accurate compared to the actual one. Um, and I was just using these fuel tanks because you can change them to gray, and that's kind of how the fuel tanks on the actual sky crane look. And then I'm just using these grip uh, pads or strips to kind of create the frame of it and then using the offset tool and the rotation tool to get the angles that I wanted. Uh, it was a lot of trial and error with this. This wasn't the first design. I did spend a couple, um, I, just, I did spend a little bit of time in like my free play save that I have designing the rover and the sky crane and then kind of rebuilt it in, um, you know, in the recording that you're seeing now. I did use, uh, I'm pretty sure, eight of the Twitch engines, um, and the only reason why I used eight is because the actual Sky Crane will have eight engines. We could have gone with four of the Twitch engines, and uh, but I went with eight because, like I said, it's more accurate to the actual one. And then what I did was I just put all of those on a 50% thrust thrust limiter, which you'll see, uh, and then we have, and then that'll make it so that the thrust is equivalent to four of the Twitch engines. Uh, now you're seeing I'm going to add a probe, oh, maybe not quite yet, but soon I'm going to add a probe core on top there, and that is just going to be how we control the sky crane as it's landing. Uh, you'll probably notice later in the video that you'll, that probe core will no longer be there, and so will the um, antenna, it's not going to be there anymore, and that's because the first time I tried this, it did not go well. Um, meaning like, you know, I forgot to add a decoupler on top and like a parachute. So there's going to be a little bit um, of difference between what you see during the landing and what you're seeing me construct, but it's, it's not really, um, it's not really too different. So I didn't uh, bother adding it into the um, build because by that time I already had the rest of the rocket constructed and I thought that would be way more confusing. So I just explained it uh, now. Okay, so now I'm adding on a um, a satellite dish so we could um, communicate with the Kerbal Space Center. And um, we we since we have a probe on there, we would still be able to have like some control. Like um, we'd be able to do full throttle and like shut off the throttle completely, but we wouldn't be able to have the fine increments, which 
um, is what would be the most important. So that's why we needed that communications dish. Uh, and while I, while I was explaining that, um, I built up the back shell of the rover, and what I and I just built that out of a fairing, and then kind of constructed it downwards, and then put a heat shield there. And now I am constructing the cruise stage for the rover, and this basically houses um, batteries and solar panels, so that the roller rover can um, have powered throughout um, its course to Duna. Or Mars in, um, yeah, or Mars. <laughs> um, I use these structural panels that came with the, I'm, I believe this was the Making History DLC, and they came in really handy for creating the shape of the, um, of the cruise stage. And then I put in some batteries and some solar panels just so we could have some electric charge on our interplanetary, um, course to Mars. Now I'm adding in these RCS thrusters. Um, since I did mention before that I came back and edited some stuff, I accidentally took out those monopropellant tanks, so we didn't actually have any monopropellant to use the RCS thrusters, but it was okay. Um, it was able to land even without them, just because we weren't trying to get too precise of a landing, so we didn't really need them to adjust our course or anything, but they were still there just for the aesthetic of it. Um, now I'm adding, I'm, here I'm trying to add a probe core on top of the heat shield, which I ended up not needing, and then I, and then I forget it on there, so you'll actually see when, when we jettison the heat shield later in the video, you'll see that probe core pop out. Um, so yeah, I thought that would be worth mentioning. But now, uh, once that, since that is done, I'm just adding in some fuel tanks, and now pretty much the most complex parts of the build are up. Uh, we just need to finish constructing the rest of the rocket. I did end up going with a Poodle engine um, in, at, in the end for our transfer stage uh, just because it was more efficient and we didn't really need that much thrust and we, we had some more delta V um, you know even though it was only like 300 extra meters per second it's still always good to have that option. Um, but now I am building up the fairing and then putting in the rest of the engines um, and actually I just cut, I just did a test, um, that's why you kind of saw it cut weirdly because I had just done a test and realized that that little, um, that little fairing piece that pops up on the heat shield wouldn't actually detach and it might blow up. So, um, I just took it out and put the, um, probe core in a little differently. And then there is where I switch out the Poodle engine. I was go trying to go for that single bell, but it was just a little bit too long to, uh, and it was kind of interfering with that uh, engine plate. So I just put it into the double bell configuration. And now I'm just fixing up all the staging and we can go to launch. Um, this wasn't, this rocket wasn't too accurate to the um, Atlas V rocket, which they used to launch the actual Perseverance rover, but I figured that um, that would be okay since the center point of this mission was the rover and the helicopter um, themselves. Um, but yeah, now we can kind of keep going on a normal ascent profile. Nothing too crazy, wanting to be about 45 degrees um, angled by the time we get to 10,000 meters. Uh, just so we can get a nice efficient orbit. Uh, now for that second stage, we're using a Rhino engine. The first stage was a Mammoth, if you did not catch that. Um, and we got our apoapsis up to 80 kilometers, which is what we wanted at. And then we're just um, kind of finalizing our orbit there, getting the other side up, or our periapsis up to 80 kilometers as well, and trying to make it nice and circular. Uh, once we get past 70 kilometers, which is where we start getting into space, we can deploy that fairings, since we're not really in the realm of any significant um, aerodynamic effect. And yeah, there we just got into orbit. So now I can start planning our um, Duna encounter. Trying to get, um, I, in the end, our Duna encounter was um, at 20 kilometers above the surface. I wasn't able to get that straight off the bat just because, you know, it would have been really difficult to do that all the way from Kerbin. So I ended up having to keep that transfer stage. Um, until we were really close to Duna's atmosphere. We were actually in the sphere of influence before we detached this Poodle stage, uh, which isn't completely accurate, but, um, you know, like I said, I, I don't think that matters too much because we got the rover landed down on Duna. Now we're just adjusting our, um, uh, our periapsis 
to try and get it closer to Duna's surface, and you know, trying to get it to um, inter inter um, intersect with Duna's atmosphere, and that way we can burn off most of our uh, speed with air braking, and then get that last little bit of speed with a parachute, and then obviously we'll get the rest of the landing done with the sky crane, and then then yeah, our rover will be landed on the surface of Duna. Here, just getting prepared to um, execute that maneuver node, just like that. And it's done, so we have our Duna Periapsis. It's not perfect right now, but we're going to fix it later on in the mission. Um, I spent a lot of time here just trying to get it to inter um, trying to get it like to intersect with the atmosphere. But it, it was really difficult, um, and the reason why I was doing that is just so we could get rid of that transfer stage as early as possible, because that's how it um, happened in real life. Um, but but yeah, it was kind of a waste of time. I could have been you know fixing other stuff like the um, you know inclination, and it would just take in less time. That's pretty much all I'm trying to say right now. But yeah, this. Um, this mission was was really fun to design and stuff like I had to take a lot of creative liberties with the construction of the rover just because of you know how interesting it looks and how interesting that the actual mission is and with the sky crane and everything I haven't done too many rover missions with a sky crane like this where it gets lowered down um, and the actual reason why it gets lowered down is because if we were to keep that the engines that close to the rover when we were landing once we were landing on the surface, it would kick up lots of um, rocks and dust, and it could damage the rover. Um, but when we, lo when we lower the rover down, the engines are nowhere near the surface, so the rover is completely safe from any harm or dust. Uh, you probably have just seen that little kind of diagram that just showed up, and that's just showing the different um, stages that the landing is going to go through. So right now, we're just getting rid of that cruise stage, and we're getting ready. Um, to get to peak heating, which we just reached, and you can kind of see how far along we're getting with the landing procedure. Soon we're going to have our chute deployment, which will be happening around like 5,000 meters. Um, there we get our chute is primed, and then we're going to jettison that heat shield. Probably should have waited a little bit longer, just so it fell close. Um, it's just so it fell farther away from the rover and the um, back shell. Uh, but now I brought it brought the um, playback of the video down to one time speed so you can kind of get a better sense of um, how fast we're going here. Right now we're still going around 100 meters per second, but we're around 1100 meters above the surface, so we still have plenty of time to kill off all of our velocity. And I'm just trying to get us, you know, so that, so that we can cancel out all of our horizontal momentum. That way it's, it's much easier to touch down at a much slower speed. So I've just done that. We're pretty much only have vertical velocity and now it's all just about coming down to a nice nice soft landing um, making sure that we're pointing radial out and we're gonna get ready to deploy the action group that I made which is gonna lower down the sky crane and extend the rover wheels that way um, you know we that ingenuity on the bottom of the rover doesn't actually hit the ground and the rover could actually you know use the wheels and here it's happening now, so getting really close to the surface, trying to land around one meter per second, coming down six meters, five, three, one meter above the surface, and we had a nice, really soft touchdown that we can have fly away of the sky crane, and we have just successfully landed the rover on the surface of Duna. So we can kind of prepare everything so we can, ex um, you know, get all the wheels ready. And here you can see that we have a little like fade and across and that's because in order for me to switch control to the rover I had to wait for the sky crane to to um, crash down that way we wouldn't accidentally switch to the sky crane um, see so yeah, that's why we had that little fade across uh, and now what happened is I actually accidentally got the rover stuck um, like leaning back on its wheels but I was able to you know retract the wheels and then extend them again and we could get the rover nice and you know rolling again on the surface here I'm just um, setting the um, Cal 1000 robot controller to the throttle action group. That way we can, 
you know, deploy the angle of the blades to let us fly. And you can see that we're, that's what we're doing here. We're kind of flying around, just getting next to our uh, Perseverance over, he over here, getting ready for a nice little screenshot. Um, the rover is actually surprisingly controllable. Um, the center of mass is pretty high off the ground. I had to make it like that so that the ingenuity would fit underneath the rover. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much the whole video. So if you enjoyed, leave a like. And if you've enjoyed what I've been making so far, just um, consider subscribing. It'd help me out, and I'd appreciate it greatly. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.